Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today I'm excited to present this Dinosaur Reanimator deck, which is probably the coolest standard deck I've played so far in the Bloomboro meta. And if you think of the standard meta game as a rock, paper, scissors, where a rock is represented by aggro decks like Monorad, and then control decks designed to beat aggro are represented by paper, this deck is scissors. So it's not going to have a great time against most aggro decks, as they're often going to be faster than us, but against control decks that mostly rely on source speed answers, we can potentially just combo off in one big turn and take out the opponent before they get a chance to cast their sweepers. And that's possible thanks to our reanimation spells. We've got four copies of Coiling Rebirth, a new reanimation spell from Bloomboro, can return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then if we gifted the opponent an extra card, if that creature isn't legendary, we get to create an extra 1-1 token copy of it. So that's great with creatures like Trumpeting Carnosaur, which we can easily discard for two in a red to deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then if we bring it back with Coiling Rebirth, we now get a 7-6 Carnosaur and a 1-1, but both of them get to discover five, potentially finding more high-impact cards, since we do have quite a few five drops we could find with it, including the Palani's Hatcher, which is a way we can potentially give all our dinosaurs haste, and then we also get to make a pair of dinosaur egg tokens, and each turn we get to transform one into a 3-3 dinosaur. Then we also have two more reanimation spells with a Ragdos Joins Up, and it's actually close whether we want more copies of Ragdos Joins Up or Coiling Rebirth, since they are both excellent in this deck, but Ragdos Joins Up has a little bit more synergy with our legendary creatures, whereas Coiling Rebirth is better with our non-legends. And then in addition to bringing back a creature, it also gets two additional plus one plus one counters, and whenever a legendary creature we control dies, Ragdos Joins Up deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. And what better card to reanimate with Ragdos Joins up than a Galta Stampede Tyrant. This 8-mana 12-12 Trampler, when it enters, can put any number of creature cards from our hand onto the battlefield. So there is a bit of tension there, because if we can reanimate Galta, then it's good to have some dinosaurs left in hand to put onto the battlefield for free, and that way potentially take out the opponent in one attack if we can give all our creatures haste with a Hatcher. But it also allows us to just run a higher density of creatures in general, because it's good if we discard them, but it's also good if we have some leftover creatures in hand, so we've got a lot of high impact creatures in general, and that way our late game is going to be incredibly powerful. And then we've got another legendary dinosaur with a tally, which is also great if it can cast some powerful dinosaurs for free, and can also maybe hit a card from the opponent that could be useful. And then we've got two copies of Voltborn Tyrant, not legendary, but this one's quite good to reanimate with a Coiling Rebirth, once again making that 1-1 one, one token, since that token is still going to trigger, gaining 3 life and drawing an extra card, so this is also quite nice to have on the battlefield when we're comboing off. And then rounding out a deck, we do have a couple sweepers to hopefully survive aggro decks with Brotherhood's End, dealing three to each creature and each planeswalker. Can also blow up artifacts. And then in the early game, we've got lots of discard and draw effects to kind of sculpt our hand. Bitter Reunion can also be sacrificed to give all our creatures haste. So if we don't find a hatcher, a reunion could still be a way to set up a one-hit KO. And then we also have the full set of Sahili's Lattice, which is also great in a Dinosaur Reanimator deck, because it's still fine as a two-mana play to discard and draw to, but later we can also potentially craft with one or more dinosaurs, making this four toughness dinosaur with power equal to the total power of the exiled cards used to craft it. So let's say we just have a Bitter Union and Sahili Slantis on the battlefield with 6 mana, then all of a sudden if we have 20 power worth of dinosaurs to exile with Atlantis, we could make this dinosaur, give it haste with our union, and take out the opponent out of nowhere. So this is mostly a backup plan, but it's a pretty good one to have, especially against control decks that rely on counter spells, since we can resolve the Lattice early on, and then our opponent always needs to be worried about us crafting it for 5 mana. And then we also have two copies of Bitter Triumph as a bit of instant speed removal, can deal with creatures or planeswalkers, and we can also discard a card to it to maybe put our Galta or some other dinosaur in the graveyard to set up our reanimation plan. And then the mana base has three copies of Cavern of Souls for a blue counter spell deck, naming dinosaur to make those uncounterable. Then plenty of surveil lands, since we're not doing a whole lot in the early turns except for discarding and drawing. So theater. Mortuary and Commercial District are nice place early, as they can also maybe fill the graveyard with additional dinosaurs, or just sculpt our hand to make sure we find the right pieces. And then we've got the uh, Fabled Passage, only three copies, since we do need lots of dual lands to fix our colors as well. And then we've got two swamps, two mountains, and a forest. And then a couple pain lands here with uh, Sulphur Springs, just to have a few more untapped lands as well, so we can cast a turn three Brotherhoods and when needed. 
So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Although we are missing an untapped land for turn 3 Brotherhood's End. Facing Lizards. So Brotherhood's End is going to be very effective. I'll take the untapped land. Possible our opponent's got a discard effect to take away the Brotherhood's End. And that's going to be quite backbreaking since we don't really have a backup plan. Flame Cash Gecko off to a quick start. Although it also kind of runs into our sweeper. But our opponent could also get their Hard Claw above 3 Toughness. And Carnosaur. I probably put in the graveyard, although it might incentivize them to get Hard Claw up to 4 Toughness now. As opposed to playing more creatures out. So maybe I keep it on top for that reason, and we can always discard it later with a reunion. But I need to make sure this initial Brotherhood's End is successful. Opponent attacks. So they're not growing the Hard Claw, but they did have the Warlock to take the Brotherhood's End. So yeah, that's what we wanted to avoid. Now at least we do still have Carnosaur to deal 3 damage to destroy the Hard Claw. Yeah, hopefully that buys us a little bit of time. Although probably not enough. Button goes to attackers. Have to act now. And our opponent's got another Warlock. So yeah, build with Warlock is going to be much better against us than one without it. And needed to top deck another Brothers End pretty much. Don't think we have many outs. If our opponent sends in Vents, we fall to one, but then we're not uh, surviving. Unless maybe we set up a Coiling Rebirth on a Voltborn Tyrant. Something along those lines. Although, let's see what's better. Galta putting in a Voltborn Tyrant versus double Voltborn Tyrant of a Coiling Rebirth. Yeah, if Galta puts in Voltborn, the Voltborn only triggers once. So I think discarding the Voltborn is actually better here. Alright, we've got the Coiling Rebirth, so we actually have a chance of still comboing off. But it's quite precarious here, since we're at a virtual one life. And our opponent's got a lot of creatures with menace. Take our turn. Another Voltborn. So in hindsight, now Galta would have been better than... Voltborn has the card to discard. So we'll gain some life back. And hopefully this is enough to survive an incoming attack. If the Voltborn dies, it's not going to produce an extra token, since it already is a token. And currently we could still go for Ragdos joins up on Carnosaur next turn. So our opponent's doing the math, decides to attack. And I can soak up two damage at most. So may as well save the 1-1. One, one. Which will draw us more cards and gain more life. A Gev. That's fine. A Gecko will deal one damage. So we could be that to a burn spell here. Maybe they need to go digging with the Gecko's ability. Fireglass Mentor could still maybe find some burn spells, but uh, yeah, we get to untap, so mission successful. Now I imagine it's still Rakdos on Carnosaur to trigger Voltborn and gain a bunch of life. And ideally hit another 5 mana play. And we actually did. Awesome. So we're certainly out of burn range now. And are we even in a position to consider an attack? 16, 19... I don't think we need to risk it, since we've got the tools to just win next turn pretty much. Since I can discard a Galta to hand size, and then reanimate it next turn. 
so that should be all we need. And uh, Lattice can go. Just have to watch out that we don't end up decking with Voltborn Tyrant triggers, so might not want to put a third one in play. Laughing Jasper is fine. And do we get to untap? Not before they take out a Carnosaur. And our opponent's going for it. So line up some blocks. Something along these lines seems fine. And now it's time for the big finale, calling Rebirth on Galta. And I'm gonna live dangerously and put a Voltborn in play anyway, but uh, yeah, by putting another Galta in play, we also enable Ragdos joins up, since the legendary rule has us get rid of one of the Galtas, so that's already 12 damage. And then, yeah, there's plenty of haste damage coming across, so well over 20 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, missing a few pieces, but we do have some early surveil lands, Brothroads and to catch up against aggro. So I'll still uh, try it here. So initially probably looking for some discard outlets. Hatcher would be good to have in hand to eventually give the team haste if we're up against blue-white control with plenty of board wipes. I will want to give the team haste, so maybe keep that one on top still. Counter spells are going to be tricky to play around. I do also want to keep hitting my land drops, since we can eventually just hard cast some of these. So now we're mainly looking for reanimation spells. Opponent's still not doing much. So it's turn four, and no spell has been cast yet. Could see them draw two with a new counter spell. Yep. Alright, could just hard cast a Hatcher. If they use no more lies, it will get exiled, so no reanimating it afterwards. So maybe for now we wait until I can at least guarantee a follow up to the Hatcher in case they uh, deal with this one. Maybe Carnosaur resolves. And if our opponent has to discard to hand size, we're pretty happy, as they will eventually run out of answers. It's a bit of an unconventional game so far. And there's Jace. So our opponent does still have two mana up for uh, no more lies. But we can use Carnosaur to finish off Jace at least. And they're potentially doing us a favor by milling a Galta. So could also cast a Bitter Triumph actually, hoping they use a counter spell so I can then resolve the Hatcher. And for now, I'm just gonna pay three life, I think, since we already have stuff in Graveyard to reanimate. So yeah, the Carnosaur would be uncounterable to destroy Jace, but I'm kind of hoping they actually counter here. No more lies is not gonna work, because we could just pay for it, but our opponent using a Soul Partition on Jace now. So now I think I do respond with Carnosaur, even though if we draw land six, just casting the Carnosaur would be all right. In which we ended up doing. But uh, now we'll go for Hatcher. Our opponent may need to use a Sweeper to clean up. And then if we draw another land we can resolve one of our 7 drops. So we've kind of taken the initiative in a way. And a temporary lockdown, a way to deal with all the tokens. Alright, let's... Uh, Try and cast a 7-drop, maybe start with Tyrant if we expect it to be countered. And then Itali could be more impactful if it resolves. Although both of them would be powerful, to be honest. So yeah, no more lies will exile it. Can still attack for 5. And hopefully they don't have two more counter spells left. And Bitter Union... 
think I still cast a Tyrant here, make them answer it. Would have haste with a Hatcher, so can immediately attack. Opponent's gonna draw three, looking for a Counterspell, which they found. But now we get to put them to seven. And uh, yeah, we've already seen a couple No More Lies. The four mana Counterspell, they might be playing three steps ahead. Now Loran just as a blocker. And uh, yeah, I'm tempted to just cast a tally, kind of brute force it here. Next turn we can reunion discard the Brotherhood's end to keep digging. Go ahead and add another four mana counter. And we might see them chump now. So the game goes on. Multiple seven drops countered so far. And there's a Coiling Rebirth, so if that resolves, we're in business. And I can gift a card in order to maybe get back Carnosaur, which would then discover five twice, potentially finding another reanimation spell. Going for Galta now, not that exciting, so would probably just go for Itali without gifting a card then. Kind of liking the idea of Carnosaur, since we're likely to hit another reanimation spell. And if they counter, then they don't get to draw. Our opponent had another No More Lies, so that happens. Should be able to hard cast Galta next turn. And our opponent has a Soul Partition for the Hatcher, although still castable for 7. So, yeah, opponent's going to be running low on counter spells now. And if their removal is board wipes, we can still get them with haste. Loran will destroy the reunion, sadly. But the Hatcher can still give haste. And Anchorage is going to get busy. So opponent is finally starting to turn the corner. Hatcher resolves. And a whale can deal with the token. So that's disappeared. Put on main phasing the whale to have it back as a blocker, so they're not planning to wipe the board at least. Okay, is it time for Galta? I think so. Seems better than just trying to remove the whale. Opponent's gonna draw in response, hoping for a counterspell. They didn't get it. And our opponent concedes, even though we didn't have any creatures to cheat into play. Alright, so we got there the hard way without a Cavern of Souls. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We have a slow but powerful hand, assuming we get to five mana. Need some discard outlets for Galta, and then we're in business. I'll try it. Keep a theater. Yeah, the Surveil lands are perfect for this strategy, since we're not doing much in the early game, so we may as well get some extra value. One's got the bats. Luckily, we have multiple reanimation spells and Carnosaur to destroy it. So they likely take the Carnosaur. And I'll keep another one on top, I suppose. So we'll still need land 5. But now, Coiling Rebirth, getting back Carnosaur could be the initial play we try and make. Opponent on Golgari mid range. So if both game plans kind of work out as intended, we should be able to go over the top of their strategy. They probably have some removal for our creatures. Could be a way for them to deny the haste. And then I may as well take out the bat now. Even if they have another one, they would just take the Carnosaur, so... 
and then they might tap out for a shield root, which could be a good thing if we draw an untapped land to combo off. Otherwise it will apply quite a bit of pressure. It's gonna be a Liliana instead. Alright, they might be doing me a favor here. Discard Galta. And then Aragdos joins up, brings it back. And we've got the land, perfect. And then the legendary rule is gonna work to our advantage here. As we get to sacrifice Galta to deal some direct damage to my opponents. Maybe could have sacrificed a 14 powered one, but uh, Brotherhood Sense not bad either. So their opponent's at 9, and if Galta dies, they take 14, so they need to deal with the enchantments. And then also with the huge trampling dinosaurs, so that's asking a lot. Goodbye, Coiling Rebirth. Preacher's not gonna do it here. Alright, let's go to attackers. And I go for the throw, it does 14 damage, I'm afraid. And that'll do it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit one-sided. Uh, can fetch Swamp, turn to discard Galta. And then discard probably another Galta to look for other dinosaurs to reanimate. It's actually not terrible, since we have ways to get rid of the extra copies. So I'll actually try it. And then now I can maybe surveil first. Coiling Rebirth is what we need. So hopefully our opponent gives us time to set up. Builder's Talent, I don't mind. And then Lattice is also good if we face counter spells as something we can potentially craft as an extra threat. Found our Cavern of Souls could also come in handy. And now two reanimation spells. So yeah, we're off to a promising start. Just need to hit a few more dinosaurs. Bone's gonna try and draw with a Caretaker's Talent. We're going to Reunion. Discard Galta still. And then can fetch a swamp. So now we can put a Carnosaur in play with a Galta. Opponent does have a demolition field for the Cavern of Souls, so only want to play it if we're ready to cast a dinosaur with it. And our opponent using it on commercial district. That's fine. Can get my swamp now. Opponent copies the wall and draws another card. So, forest or swamp, I guess we'll go for a forest so we have a little bit of green mana in case we need to hard cast some dinosaurs. And for now, keep digging. I don't think I need to discard the Carnosaur since we want it in hand, but discarding Galta should be fine. Although, that being said, if I keep Galta in hand, I could deal 12 damage with Ragdos joins up if it resolves. So maybe just discard a land here. So had I kept all the Galtas, we could have dealt 24 damage just from Ragdos joins up triggers, assuming again it resolves, which is not a given. So play a land and pass. So we don't have a way to give creatures haste except for Bitter Triumph if we wait until we have 6 mana. Opponent taps out for an Archangel Elspeth. So the coast is clear. And then hoping that Carnosaur's Discover hits the Hatcher. But I'm not gonna wait anymore. So I'll sacrifice 
Maybe the 14 powered Galta. Find a better reunion. Okay, maybe discard another rank those joints up. And a brother it's ends. Still worth casting here. And then I guess we get another Galta trigger to put in the Hatcher, so this actually worked out beautifully. Now give everyone haste. And we even dodged our own sweeper. And our opponent explodes. Wow, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a pretty slow hand, but uh, Brother it's end hopefully to beat aggro. And then a powerful late game if we can get to it. Start with Theater, so we can potentially play a turn to Bitter Triumph if needed. And then we're mostly looking for some of our discard and draw effects, as well as our 5 mana reanimation spells. Another Surveil Land I think I'll keep. And our opponent on Black White Bats. Well, if they play Deep Cavern Bat, they can take away our Brotherhood's End, so then I may need to draw another one. So maybe give up the extra land now. I'm not in a hurry to cast Brotherhood's End, but we will eventually need it. Opponent's got the duo to gain more life. Okay, since we drew another Brotherhood's End, it could be reasonable to cast one now, but I'm going to be patient since we don't have a turn 4 play. And then keep the Rebirth. I will still need to put a Dinosaur in Graveyard, but we'll find some discard outlets soon enough. And then now we've got double Brotherhood's End, so even if they take one, we're still fine. And then Zorlin will die as well. This can name Dinosaur. And now a case of the Uneaten Feast. And get to play Hatcher. Could see removal on it, which kind of sets up our rebirth. And then next turn I could get double Hatcher going. While still having the tokens here. But if we were to draw a discard outlet, we can still go for a Tyrant instead. Speaking of which, Sahili's Lattice. So yeah, Rebirth now for double Hatcher. I'll get four tokens, opponent draws a card. I can immediately turn two into three threes and attack for 16 versus discard Tyrant. And then next turn, get it back, drawing a bunch of cards in the process. It's kind of a close call, but maybe the added pressure now is worth it. I guess I should rephrase. One of them will be a 1-1. One, one. And future dinosaurs will have haste. Opponent's going to try and gain some life. If they can solve the case, they can start getting creatures back out of the graveyard as well. And let's cast a Lattice. I don't think we need Brotherhood's End anymore. Although discarding one Voltborn Tyrant is also reasonable, since we're probably not going to have time to cast both. And if we find another reanimation spell, it's good to have it in the graveyard. Okay, play our Surveil Land, and then next turn we can hard cast an Atali. Another Hatcher can go. Opponent responds with Soul Partition, maybe a little bit too late since the trigger's already on the stack. So we still get to attack for 12. And we still have haste for next turn. So no need to wipe the board. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have. 
what looks like an acceptable hand. Could fetch Swamp right away, or just play District and turn to Lattice. And Carnosaur is good to have in the graveyard for Coiling Rebirth. Opponent Blue-White. Alright, so against Blue-White, maybe Better Triumph's not going to be too necessary. Keep all my Dinosaurs and dig towards a Cavern of Souls. Got multiple reanimation spells. Could better triumph again, discarding Itali to bring back with Ragdos joins up. Sure. And we'll fetch a swamp. So no Cavern of Souls in sight yet, although the good news is that Lantis can turn into a dinosaur through a counter spell and potentially threaten lethal. Our hand's getting pretty stacked up. So we've got a couple options next turn. Opponent is just gonna take their draw step. All right, found our Cavern of Souls. So now I like the Hatcher plan. Make them use Spot Removal on it. And then maybe reanimate it back later. And if our opponent taps out for Sunfall to clean things up, we can hit him with a reanimation spell. All right, Prankster may be pointing more towards a Monastery Mentor type of deck. Or it could also be the Abuelo's Awakening combo deck. With Ragdos, Joins Up and Hulking Metamorph. In which case we could just die here. And our opponent discarding a Grand Abolisher, so it does seem more like the Abuelo's Awakening combo. Not sure how many counter spells they run nowadays. But it's more of a combo deck than a control deck. Lockdown will clean up a lot of our things. And we have options. Bitter Triumph could discard Galta, and then next turn I could bring it back. Or we could Coiling Rebirth, Trumpeting Carnosaur, which could hit more 5 drops. Or just Ragdos joins up on Itali, and then... We're attacking for 12 plus whatever Itali finds, so all decent options. Kind of liking the Coiling Rebirth. Since we might hit another reanimation spell. And that works. Hit a Lattice. And now by discarding Galta, I can maybe still hit a reanimation spell with a second discover trigger and bring Galta back. Plus we would also have it in the graveyard for Ragdos joins up. And a Brotherhood's End I'll put in hand. Alright, still decent, but could have been better. Time for 13. And the opponent could discard Metamorph and then kill us next turn. As we see another Tempest Heart. Discarding two lanes, alright, so they still need another discard effect to put Metamorph in the graveyard, as well as Ragdos joins up, assuming that's what they're playing, which, yeah, does point in that direction. Founding can cast a spell for free or mill for four. Another Abolisher found. Prankster as a blocker. Unlikely to be enough. And another Coiling Rebirth is a draw. So we could cast an uncounterable Voltborn Tyrant and attack with it. Or we could try another reanimation spell, although there's a chance they have something like uh, No More Lies in hand to counter it. Alright, 
Yeah, I mean, Rangdos joins up as the more fun option, if we're being honest. Bring back Galta. Put in Volborn Tyrants. And smash. Could even clear a path with a bitter triumph. And an Afara's Dispersal. So if I just destroy my own creature here, I can trigger Rakdos Joins Up to deal 14 damage. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keeper, I think. I'm looking for a reanimation spell. Another Lattice is still useful, I think. Just to cycle through the deck. And I can play one now, discarding Galta. Found a Rebirth. Alright, so a Rebirth on Galta. Put in Hatcher and Carnosaur. Could be strong. So we want to keep our dinosaurs in hand. Opponent on a wide control deck, probably relying mostly on sorcery speed sweepers. So we can Lattice discarding Brotherhood's End now. Could have also surveilled before drawing, but I'll keep Swamp on top. And then next turn can still Bitter Union to make sure we find land 5. Opponent's got the Caretaker's Talents, that's all fine. One way our opponent could still potentially mess with our combo is if they have instant speed removal for Hatcher to deny the haste. But we can also play it slow and activate Bitter Union for haste if we're kind of worried about that. And then I guess I don't really need Galta in hand. Alright, so we've got plenty of lands to combo off next turn. Or we can wait until 6 mana if we want to play it extra safe since our opponent is not pressuring us in any way, so we can kind of take our time. But now that our opponent only has one mana available, we don't need to worry about instant speed removal anymore. And I'm pretty sure we can win with what we have going on. So, rebirth back Galta. Got a few dinosaurs to put on the battlefields. Get some triggers. Find another hatcher. And a Haraktos joins up, which conveniently can get back another Galta here. And then I can sacrifice either one of them, dealing 12 damage to our opponents. And then still get to attack, turning two of our tokens into 3-3s, three and that's well over 20 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a slow but keepable hand, I think. Could use a few surveil lanes. Now we've got Galta to discard to our bitter union. Opponent on red aggro, it seems. And plotting a slick shot, so this is kind of our worst matchup. As they can likely present lethal before we get to 5 mana. Carnosaur gives us a little bit of interaction, and we drew a Brotherhood's End, so we actually have a chance. But if our opponent can just attack us with a huge slick shot while playing around some damage based removal, they can still get us. But yeah, opponent taps out for Bane Splitter, so now Brotherhood's End will clean up quite nicely. We'll have to take one damage, but it's not a concern. Then next turn, Surveil, plus maybe discard a Carnosaur. And then we'll have double black for Coiling Rebirth on Carnosaur, potentially. And then there's already a Galta in the graveyard, so we wouldn't mind drawing another dinosaur. 
Okay, so let's see what our opponent can come up with. Hardfire Hero in play. Bane Splitter to try and target it. Let the Valiant Trigger go on the stack, and then we'll take it out in response. So we should only take one damage. And then hopefully they don't have some haste creature to take us out. And uh, yeah. Name Dinosaur. Rebirth on Galta, putting in Carnosaur and Hatcher for haste. Otherwise, gifting a Coiling Rebirth on Carnosaur is also a pretty sweet play. And then hope to hit some other Dinosaur or Reanimation spell with a Carnosaur. Alright, but I guess that's already gonna be enough here. 19 plus 3 more from the token. And yeah, we can even beat Monorad with a good draw. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We have pretty slow hands, but... Uh, Bit of removal with a Carnosaur, a Rebirth. So looking for some discard outlets and maybe some additional interaction depending on the matchup. I'll keep a Mountain. Do need to hit my land drops as well. Another blue-white deck. Can maybe fetch for Swamp, thin out the deck a little bit. And for now, Surveil. I'm gonna say no to the Springs. Would prefer a Cavern of Souls if we're gonna draw land. Alright, Bitter Reunion we can cast. Could play land first, although might draw into a Surveil land, and if they counter it, unless I pay three most likely. And then I would be putting probably Galta in the graveyard to get back with Rebirth, putting Hatcher and Carnosaur in play. Alright, so we've got a couple attempts at it. And of course, Ragdos joins up is going to be the better way to reanimate a Galta. Get lost my reunion, that's fine. No need to sacrifice it, otherwise we miss out on the map tokens. And we can't have that. Opponent makes the mistake of tapping out for an Archangel Elspeth. And uh, they're going to see why that was a mistake. Say hello to Galta. With haste. Alongside a couple Carnosaurs. Finding a lattice. And a reunion, so could have hit better off Carnosaur, but I'm not gonna complain. And just go face. Even the zero one can attack. Alright, so that was a pretty wild ride, playing Dinosaur Reanimator. Again, this is probably not going to be great against most aggro decks in the format, so Mono Reds is not going to be an easy matchup, although as we showcased can still be winnable. But uh, yeah, if you're facing a lot of more controlling decks that mostly rely on sorcery speed removal, this is a great deck to punish them and just combo kill in one big turn. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.